I just hit record in case you're wondering. Thank you. <laughs> so the only thing showing on the wood was the animal, and I textured the animal. All right, and you can pass that. On this one, which is a partially completed, I have the animal, which would have been there, and just stuck them down there like stickers. And I textured everything on the outside of the stencil, which is the negative space. So that when I am done and I peel the animal off, you can see the positive space of the animal left behind. Yes, I make them. And I'm going to discuss that further on how you can make your own and different sources for making them. All right, so basically the whole idea of what we're doing with the stencil is defining positive space and negative space. And there was a very good, uh, uh, famous comedian, I can't think of his last name right now, John, but uh, as he was famous for saying, he says it's like the hokey pokey. You put your left foot in, you put your left foot out, you put your right foot in, you shake it all about. You, you do the hokey pokey and you turn around, that's what it's all about. <laughs> all right, so. What's the next thing on my list? I have to keep referring here. Okay, so now, um, one of the things that I want to do after I, I did burn textures on these, and when you burn, you have this kind of ashy charcoal. So I always mask everything up, and then I paint it. So when I peel off everything on this one, this one is done, it's uh, been sprayed with uh, black paint, and it's finished. So I can show you examples of how we apply stencils, which is pretty easy. Like here is the positive image of a horse. I happen to be lucky enough, I have a machine that's left over from my business. I did uh, graphic arts for 30 years. So I just happen to have a thousand dollar uh, cutter that can cut custom stencils that's just sitting in my basement and I use it for planing. Um, so I cut out these horses and I just peeled the horse off. This is just like bumper sticker stock. If you've ever seen uh, cars and in the back windshield, it says riding in, in memory of or something, use the same machine. You just cut them on any colored vinyl, you peel them off and you stick them down. So now if you notice on this one, there's like a hole in the space between his legs over here. So if you have a hole, how do you hold everything together in order to transfer it onto the wood? So I have um, just, it's a special tape that they sell for sign makers, but you can use painter's tape. So all you have is a low tack uh, masking tape and I put it on the face after I peeled the animal out and I left that little piece that goes in between the legs is still there. So now all I have to do is that transfer tape? Uh, it might be called transfer tape. Yeah. I don't remember. I bought it years ago. They make it in different sizes. Vinyl supply companies call it transfer tape. Oh, there you go. I probably knew that once. All right. So this is exactly like a bumper sticker. There's nothing different about it. So now my sticker is held together and that little space in the ankles is together. And then you just peel off your masking tape that held everything together. And I've applied my stencil and I'm ready to paint or do whatever I want to do. So that, that one you consider negative space and the top one is called positive space. Negative space would go around the horse Okay. Positive space would be the horse. Okay, it's negative. It's, it's where the gray is right now. That's right. All right, so now we want to emphasize how that looks. So one way you can do it is paint. And I'm going to get into a discussion a little bit later on here about different kinds of paints because there's a lot to say there. So uh, this one is a uh, gel water-based paint that I have because it was $4. They had other ones that were like $15, $20, but I'm not Michelangelo, so I just got the cheap one. And then I said, well, we'll see what happens with it. So all I'm trying to do is put down a very thin coat. No, 
I'll squeeze this enough, it'll squirt all over the table. Uh, this was uh, Michael's. So now if you have textures, you can just go ahead and keep on brushing until it gets in your textures. And here it is. I sometimes use a toothbrush. So we're gonna give that just a minute or two to dry. So now I'm using a gel and I'm putting it on as thin as possible. What you want to avoid, this was a very porous piece of wood which was going to go in the firewood pile. So what I did was I, I was using a very thin water-based paint in an airbrush and I dumped paint on it. I just dumped it. And when I peel off this stencil, what I'm expecting is that I have a lot of bleed underneath. So now, so I'll pass this around. The one on the left, I wrote light, which meant that it was a light spray. And the one on the other side was a heavy spray. And you can see a big fuzzy difference, which is one reason why I use the airbrush, because I can just dust it and get a very, very fine light uh, color on there, and I'm not going to make a mess. The other option is use a paintbrush, a little bit of paint, lightly, and you just keep on going over it lightly, and don't try to just dump paint on top. Steve, yeah. there's like that. Couldn't you have done the whole pre sealing of the wood before you hit the hand? Well, I, I suppose. Um, usually, I don't seal the wood before I do all my texturing because then, as I'm texturing and it's burning, I've got whatever finishes in the smoke. And I'm painting is the last thing I'm going to do. So, yeah, you could. All right. So, um, I'll bring this up subject up too. Why am I even bothering doing all the stenciling? And the reason is, this is a perfect example on it on finish of why I'm doing stenciling. I've got, uh, well, I started in 77, but I really, really started in like 99. So I've got 22 years of experience. I've got $40,000 worth of machines. I've seen 500 to 1,000 demos. I've given demos. I, I'm looking at the, how to perfect my cut, try to perfect my form, how to get a good sanded finish, how to get a, a good oil finish to protect it. And it's brown and it's round. <laughs> and that's all it is. So if I want to sell this, this is a very nice salad bowl or display table bowl. And I can sell this bowl for $75 or $100, but it's just a round bowl. Whereas if I take the same amount of time that I put into this bowl, into this bowl, and then I add these animals, which I try to make things look fluid, like they are moving around. And in this case, these were all supposed to be Colorado animal, elk, and uh, mountain goats and bears. So everything is marching around to give some kind of movement. It's all technical. And this is now a $200 bowl. So if you're a capitalist and you want to sell your stuff, by adding art, you definitely increased your value dramatically. But it doesn't help to, to do a really nice stenciling job on bad form. You have to have good form, good finish. So you're just getting to a point where, well, now what am I going to do? So this is something to work on. All right. Where are we? So we did, oh, I, I did that out of order. Here's another example too that I had made up. I just used a razor blade. I have a, you can get old bumper sticker stock, you can use contact paper, anything you want that's sticky on the other side. And I used a razor blade and made those shapes. But I want to keep that proportion of keep those pieces together. I can't just peel off both pieces and stick them down. That's why I would use that masking tape. Holds everything together, transfer it on, pull off the masking tape, you're all ready to go. Um, okay, so now in designing these, they're here somewhere. Here we go. I have 
the advantage of some computer experience and I use a program called Adobe Illustrator. And I realize most people won't have this, you know, those kind of programs or know how to do this. So I'll show you some other options later. Uh, but in the meantime, what I'm doing is creating a map. So I'll go on the internet and I will search for whatever animal that I want to use and just find clip art. And then I look for silhouette clip art. And then I look for silhouette clip art that are moving or in the right direction instead of like I was looking for squirrels and I wanted them all stretched out and running and long because I needed a long thin space. And all I found was little bushy tails that came up in the air. So I defaulted to lizards because they were long and skinny. <laughs> so now you make your map and you can number all of your different pieces or you can just make make a note of where number one is. Then you can take all of your pieces and you can, uh, I'm getting out of order here. It's hard, you know, I've spent like eight or 10 hours preparing this and I'm still out of order. Okay. All right, so I can continue on that. All right, so I have my map. I have my images and I want to transfer them and I can transfer a number of different ways. If it's a simple image, then I can just take a razor blade on contact paper or old bumper stickers and I can just carefully trace my image and cut it out with a razor blade. Then you have your positive and your negative space ready to go. Another option is you can use clear printable labels. So now what I do with this product, and you can pass that around, is you can just run your map through the inkjet printer. So now let's say this fit on eight and a half by 11, but your bowl is bigger. As long as you keep track of which animal is which, then you just range them to fit on your eight and a half by 11, because you don't care if they're upside down or right side up, you just have to know which one is which, because you're going by the map. And now you print that sheet of paper and now you cut out each of those animals, just rough cut, just make a big rectangle around it, stick it down onto your wood, make, follow your map and follow everything all the way around. Then you use a burning tool and you burn the outlines. And when you burn the outlines, now you have a perfect outside if you peel off the inside or you have a perfect inside if you peel off the outside. So you don't have to have any kind of special fancy equipment. Yes. Do you have a problem with the plastic burning from, or melting from the burning tool? It smells. Yeah, that's about it. But, but it doesn't melt. I use a uh, um, a very sharp uh, razor edge on cutting tip, as opposed to something wide and fat. Um, but yeah, I don't have any trouble. And you can cut it at pretty low temperature if you need to. So now one of the benefits of doing that is, and I was going to bring that up also. So let's say you cut your outline with your uh, razor knife on the burner. So now it's burned and it's sealed. Now when you apply your paint, you have a barrier and the paint will not seep through and make a fuzzy image like that first one. So it improves the clarity of your image. Do you weed all of that? Yeah. Do you just weed the inside or weed the outside? All right. Moving right along here. Steve, you get two for one, you do a set like that, you do one bowl positive and another bowl negative out of the same. Well, that sounds great, except that you'd have to have two identical bowls. And if you didn't have two identical bowls, then the other one is one is too big, one is too small, and it wouldn't really fit. So, no, I don't. I was thinking about making one with cats. I was looking at that the other day, and uh, then I was talking with my son, and and as he pointed out, he says, uh, we both don't like cats. I'm allergic to them. We just don't like cats. And we, <laughs> and, and we both felt that anything that lives in a house and poops in a house should be paying rent or leave. Okay. Um, so we got our map. Now what do we got? Um, okay, so now we should move on into the pyrography as a means of decorating. So as I said before, you can just paint, like in this case, these were, I pasted the negative, the outside space and left the fish empty and then painted. 
And I use the airbrush so that if you feel this, when I pass it around, you can't feel it, it's super, super thin. You're using an airbrush, but you could use a paintbrush. You don't have to have an airbrush. This I just happened to have had around for years. It was a good idea, but it, I didn't like it. So it's still sitting around. You know, I don't know about you, but when I sell something, if I really like it, it costs more. And if I really don't like it, it sits on the shelf and I give it away. You can pass that around. So that is just a stencil and paint. And I did the paint because I wanted to create a contrast. And I'm using a pyrography because I want a texture. And uh, at the same time that I have a texture, I also want to have a uh, contrast. So I guess we can peel this one. See how this one looks. So I'm getting ready for an art show. Actually, we did. And A, my sandblaster wasn't powerful enough and it wouldn't uh, do what I wanted to do because uh, I needed a bigger air compressor. And B, you need a different type of a masking material and they make one that I could buy, uh, but I didn't have enough of an air compressor, so I didn't buy it. Well, you don't need a 40 pound compressor. Well, I had 125 and no matter what I did, it was kind of crappy. Yeah, you, you never, you never run a um, sandblaster, that kind of pressure, unless you're well, what I found is uh, what I wanted it to do was to really texturize the wood and it just kind of like lightly sanded. It was like, putting, on it long. well, I should try it again. I still have it all, but you can pass that around. On glass. Um, I don't know what I have. Somebody gave me some stuff that was like black mica crumbs, and we well, were using that. It might be silica. I mean, it might be. Um, what I just said. Um, a lot of times, using silica sand too. Okay. Well, I definitely want to try that again. That was definitely on my list to do. All right. So we were going to do. All right. Oh, you're kind of not ready for me. Okay. Good. So, well, Harbor Paint sells a kit called a magic eraser. I don't know if you ever heard of it or not. No. It's a little bitty sandbox. It's got a cup about that tall. Yeah. But you can just put the aluminum oxide in and blast away. All right. Well, we'll have to talk about that because I tried it. I'll show you what I have. I'll bring it another month, show you my gun. Uh, but all it did was like 80 grit sandpaper made it rough. It didn't. It didn't go down below the surface at all. All right, so now for texturing, I use a lot of different tips. Um, on this one, I used ball tips. I have three different size ball tips. And what I try to do, and I'm gonna pass this around and you can try and see, starting here, or let's start the other side. Starting here, I use the largest ball that I had and I didn't want to get too close to the um, stencil because I would melt it. Then as you go further around, I used the next size ball and got in closer to my edges. And then anything that was left, I went with a extra fine point and I got in as close as I could. And that's the state that the, the one with the foxes is in. It's burned in as close as possible, I mask everything up, and then you can just spray paint. And we'll pull off all that tape here in a few minutes, but there was another point on that that I'm going to go back to to discuss. So now, if you have a relatively small area to do, like this one, doing the ball points, this is two hours of burning. So you put on your music and you put on the exhaust fan and it's tap, 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 tap. And part of what I'm getting when I texture is that the image becomes a little bit raised because it hasn't been touched and everything on the surface is a little bit lowered. So you have a tactile feel of the roughness and then it's also lifted up, which highlights it even more. So I'm looking for that. You can also use those little Dremel bars and you can go tap, tap, tap and make little dents and then paint that. So any of the Dremel bars would work fine. 
I like using the burning because it scorches the wood, it seals it, it's quieter. It's just that it smells. So one of them makes noise and dust and the other one smells and is quiet. But both work, yeah. But it's not raised enough where you can go back and sand it again. Absolutely not. So when you make that little mess up and it bleeds across your leg and you're in there trying to figure out how you can scratch that burn part off to make a leg, it's difficult. So time consuming. If I have a big area, then it will be 50% faster to use one of these shading tools. Can you see that at all? May I for a second? And with the shading tool, I'm just like um, a flat iron. I'm just going pressing down, burn, pressing down, burn, pressing down. And then instead of one little dot, I'm getting something that's more like uh, close to a, a quarter of an inch long and three sixteenths of an inch wide. And you can pass that around. Oh, and then a brief talk on these handles that I've been using. I get these from Carver Tools and when I talk to the guy, you know, you know what you do, what you wanted to do. And what he does is uh, magazine cover birds or you, you're making that wooden bird that is absolutely perfect and realistic and making fine feathers and, and you think it's a real bird. And I tell him, no, I want to crank up the temperature and burn the crap out of the wood. <laughs> no, you don't do that. <laughs> yeah, I do that. <laughs> But these tips, because they are sealed together, they're made one way. If it breaks, you can send it back to them. They'll fix it for free, except for your cost of freight. And they conduct the heat better. So these really do work well. So I've been happy with these. As opposed to carvertools.com. And these are like 20 bucks a piece. This is what came with the Burning Master. And it has electrical terminals here, and you can loosen up the two screws, and you can take a piece of nichrome wire, and you can turn it around a nail and make a basket weave um, spiral. You can make, this one is just a flat out spiral. You can make different, any shape you want, and then stick in the two ends, and then it'll heat up and you have a custom made stamp. So this works great for a lot of effects. So let's say you want to, depending on your design, you want to speed this up a little bit. You can use these designs and stick them in here and fill up a bunch of big areas, one, two, three, four, five. And then the, in between, you can use the stipple dots, which take longer. So you can speed yourself up. And I'm going to turn this on and experiment and show you a few things. I'll start with, where is that first piece of plywood that I passed around? And hey, you're on the back. <laughs> I know there's no snacks today. <laughs> the little plywood with the two horses on it. You can send me up that porous uh, bowl. So I just crank up the heat. Am I plugged in? You yes, are. I am plugged in. Well, I got to crank up the heat a little more. All right, this is a very simple tool. <laughs> <laughs> I feel your pain, Steve. All this stuff. Yeah. <laughs> I don't think it's getting out. All right. It's lit up in the front, so I know it's working. I touched it. Everything I've touched tonight has not worked. <laughs> yeah, I wish. 
These things get hot in like 15 seconds. All right. Well, we're not going to experiment with that one. Let's try another one. Break a trip on the back. Oh, it's the on office. It didn't click. Oh, I smell it. There's my skin, I think. So now this one, uh, you can buy a package of little pieces of brass pipe. And they're rectangles and circles and uh, ovals from Graham Priddle, who lives in Asheville, North Carolina. And I drilled a hole in it, and I took the nichrome wire, and I just wrapped it all around it. And you crank up the heat. <laughs> hey, crank it. And you make circles. So now a good use of circles, all right, I need back another material. I passed around that half sheet of adhesive labels. The gray piece of white. Oh, that's the So I just stuck that stencil material, it's just adhesive, it could be contact paper or anything you want, and then just burn your circle right through it. Now I peeled off what was left and I have perfectly sealed dots. Now I can texture everything all around it and the same as the horses or something, it's covered there. So when I spray paint it, there won't be any paint there and then I can go back over and peel those off one by one and then I have little round dots that are the color of the wood. So that's a nice thing to work on too. So that's been very handy. And again, I use that because it uses up more of the real estate and means that I have less dot, dot, dot with the balls to try and get it covered. All right, so let's switch over. And let's turn that fan on. Switching the cable. Oh, here we go. That's the one I wanted, the first try. So I'm just going to do this briefly because it's as exciting as watching paint dry. Let's see. Here's closer to me. Now when I burn, it doesn't matter for this texture how much I overlap. Because actually what I want to do is make sure that every bit of real estate, all of the surface is completely textured. I don't want to have any empty spaces where I miss some. And it'll all look black. But when you look, hold it up to the light and you look at it later, you'll see ridges where it wasn't burned. And then I go back over it a second time and make sure they're covered. Otherwise, when you're all done and you've spray painted it black and you're all finished, you have unintended patterns. I hit it with an air gun, but you have brass brush. As long as you don't hurt your stencil. The biggest problem I have with the ball is actually that the varnish or the sap that's in the wood grows on the end of the tip and it makes uh, like a charcoal there. And the charcoal is an insulator. And you go to your next hole and every time you go, it gets less, less hot, less hot, less hot. Then you tap it off and you go back in, you'll see these little flakes 
fall off and they're in your body and you inside your bowl. I just give this all to Jerry. At least the fan will dilute it a little bit. So that's generally all I'm doing. And then I'm going to use a smaller ball and I'm going to go in closer and then a really fine ball and I'm going to go really, really close. So now at some point, Come on. There we go. So at some point, you just can't get in any closer, like on the feet on this. And I want to keep the detail. So that's one another reason that I want to paint. And I'm going to use this very thin paint, very lightly applied with a paintbrush or with an airbrush is even better, and put it down as a mist and do six or seven uh, super misting light coats. And it will fill in up really, really close until you end up with a perfect line at your stencil. Even though you didn't burn perfect to the edge, you, when you paint it, it'll be perfect to the edge. And then when you peel it off, if you look at the one that was in the box that I just passed around, you won't, unless you really look close, notice that the burn texture stopped that little bit away because now you have a perfect image. So that's where the paint really works out. Any questions? <clears throat> All right. I'll just cut this off. Yeah, let's cut that off. Cut your wire. And you can take that. <coughs> and I am wrapped around. And watch out for the water. There we go. All right. So we did that. We did that. Oh. This is a sample of the circles. Oh, yes. Um, I have a, another tool that I use, but I made the circles. So oh, that is really careful exposure, isn't it? Um, but I made the circles, made the circles, made the circles all over it, and smoothed it all out, rounded them over, and they're different size circles. Then you go back with the paint, and you lightly paint over the top. So in real life, uh, uh, Dino, Dino, the dinosaur, actually looks quite, quite good because he's textured with six or seven different shades of green paint. And I've brought him in before. That circle into showing that bag of shades. No, actually, that was made with an, another set of texturing tools, which I didn't bring with me, uh, and they really make a mess. They're jewelers' cups for making jewelers' little round gems. And you put them in a, a Dremel or a Fordham and you spin it at high speed and it friction burns it into a little bump. And I have five different sizes and you just friction burn it and it makes a huge smelly burning mess all over the place. But it ends up, it looked good. And I mean, the egg, which was up there, Sorry. was uh, capillary wood turners had a challenge and said, make a wooden egg and decorate it. This was two years ago. So it, it took me seven hours and I won a, a coupon worth $10 pass to go to the next live demo if we ever have one, but, but I won. Uh, trying to find a specific point. I might add those uh, pins that he's using on those burning tips, that store that makes those sells tips for all the different types of uh, Burning tools, the cool wood, the razor tip, anything. They'll sell you anything you need. Bob's the guy who found them, and I piggyback on what he figures out. He looks at YouTube videos and said, Here, Steve, try this. <laughs> this is a uh, uh, white diamond. So you just like you'd use with a deal buffer. Mm -hmm. or, and I put it on a piece of leather belt. And I just try to keep the uh, charcoal off of the bit. And the, the cleaner your 
cutter is or your burning tip is, the better they work. So I don't put a lot of effort into it. I'm just trying to clean it off. Shader. And it's you, that one. I make some attempt to keep them labeled. I went to somebody's house one time and he was making pens and, and, he, and he couldn't find the bushings he wanted because all of the bushings were in a, a cup. And it's like, well, maybe it's one of these. Well, maybe it's one of those. Well, well let me see if this one will fit. <laughs> okay. Now, let's see. <laughs> I thought that I had a printed stencil, but I don't. We have a pen, Andy. Any pen powers in the house? I'm disappointed. That's plastic. <laughs> So they showed up a, a hole that I had made that had horses in it and the horses overlapped. Now you can't really overlap using the individual vinyl stencils. But what I had was the outline of the horses. And what I did was burn my line, that's way too hot. To try to use as little as possible. I don't know if you're too hot. Um, you blush out a lot and it just burns deeper. Yeah. So the less heat you use, the cleaner your line. And this is really a pretty heavy line. I just want a recording set, but I haven't, haven't used it yet. They're easy peasy to use. <laughs> so you say. <laughs> <laughs> So your fingers start burning first. It's too hot. <laughs> okay. So basically, I'm doing the same thing that I stamped with that piece of brown pipe. So I just made a couple of shapes. <clears throat> so now I have this overlap in here and I can peel off whichever part I want. So I can just peel that off. I didn't finish cutting it through. And if I wanted to, I could peel off the piece that's in the middle here.
Jared, I think we lost audio. <laughs> Sorry, folks. More technical difficulties. The phone is back up. You missed a really good joke. Sorry about that. <laughs> <laughs> so now you're, I'm waiting for the paint to dry. What was the paint you just used? Um, that is our next discussion. All right. So if you have a burned lime, then it will stop dye migration. And you can use water based dyes or alcohol based dyes, it won't make any difference. They're very, very thin. And if you use a lot of it, it's still going to find its way to migrate across. And then you can use, if you like, I use water-based uh, India ink when I'm airbrushing. This is Dick Blick, and these are the paints that uh, Jacques Vessery recommends for dry brushing, where you're putting down a tiny, tiny amount of paint. It's not poster paint that you're slopping on; you're putting it on very, very thin. In this case, I used it like poster paint because it's what I had. But the idea is that it's the same as the water-based India ink; it's just that it's thicker. This one is the exact same thing, but it's even thicker, more of a gel. And where's my box? Oh, you right took here. my box. Sorry about that. Causing all kinds of problems tonight. This type of paint, oil paint or uh, acrylic, is exactly the same paint, except that this paint is really, really thick. And so you use a tiny, tiny amount. And if you had textured and you wanted to paint these horses and get it into the texture, then I'd put a tiny amount on a toothbrush and I'd toothbrush it in. Tiny amount, toothbrush, tiny amount, toothbrush, and work it all the way around. And you can get the same exact effect. So what I'm saying is you don't need to run out and buy airbrushes in order to do the exact same thing. It's just, I have one. Close. Gee, right? <laughs> oh, no, I got to you this. What I wanted you to see is the fine lines in the horse's tail. So I'm not saying that you should be able to take a razor blade and trace something and do that, but I wanted you to know that a stencil can give you a very, very clean, crisp edge. And all you have to do is burn pretty close to it and then the paint will take over the difference and give you that perfect edge. So why do you have to deal with a razor blade? I'm using a razor knife edge burning tool. So in this case, oh, where, where are we at here? What's exactly your question? You're saying you have to cut that outline out with a razor knife? Right, exactly. <laughs> Yeah, my wife's got one of the machines too, and I don't, I don't understand what you're talking about. That you have to do with a razor knife. The machine does the cut. If you don't, don't have, have a machine, oh, oh, if you don't have a machine, okay, okay. Right. The only reason you need a razor now was to peel the extra stuff off. I got it. I misunderstood. <laughs> well, good opportunity, Bob. Tell them about the machine. Okay. Since you brought up the machine, this is probably what you were talking about. And this is the same thing that Steve has, or this is the home craft style one. And my wife got the silhouette. Silhouette. Yeah, silhouette yeah, candy. Yeah. Cricket. Yeah, yep. yeah, there's a silhouette. Yep. And all it is, and all this stuff is Steve gave me. So here's that same. <laughs> same kind of little images that you can paste in, in uh, paint or they make t-shirt material out of it you can press it you can make bumper stickers and window stickers and yeah, just got everything. that's what she does she makes t-shirts and right etched glass and so all if you get an adhesive substrate and i have some sheets of stuff you can take home you have everything you need to do exactly what i'm doing she's got thousands of sheets of it at home now you can see here a sloppy painted. Yeah. And now I'm gonna 
peel off the old time. This is two or three hundred, or you give them an eBay for maybe a hundred. So then I ended up with a perfect uh, inside my area because I just peeled off everything that was sloppy painted over. And that's the degree of my Michelangelo skill as a painter. I see people that can actually draw perfect circles and stuff. I'm like, whoo, get anywhere near it. So I rely on things like uh, plotter cutters to cut out my stencils. So let's see, what do we do? I think we're closing in here. So we talked about the thickness of paints. So if you have a really thin paint, it's more likely to bleed in underneath. And if you have a thicker paint, you're less likely to have dye migration and bleed underneath. All right, so making stencils, uh, talked about you can use contact paper. It can have flowers and things on it. As long as you can use your imagination and ignore the flowers, you take that same shelf lining paper We've lost audio again. Turn your outline using a nice thin edge. And if you're making your own pieces out of nichrome wire, then you just have a loop of wire and you fold it over and you get a piece of metal and you just beat it out, beat it out, beat it out, and flatten it until you have a knife edge. And then you put it on your grinder which you all have, and then you can like shape your end of your thinned out piece of metal, put the two pieces of wire into the terminals, and you're ready to go. So I make a, this, this was a homemade tip, and so you can pass that type around if you want. But like I said, it takes a lot more energy to get that hot than these ones that are one individual tip. <coughs> but I could make a hundred of those tips for $20 worth of nichrome wire instead of one. Uh, let's see. Oh, and another way that you can get um, shapes is you can find stickers in places like Michael's and dollar stores where they would die cut for little kids. And you can say, well, I want, you, know, you may not want dragons, but you may find a bunch of things like birds. You can peel off the bird sticker and you don't care that it's printed and you stick your bird sticker down on there. You burn up to the edge of it. You paint it, you peel off your bird, you have a perfect silhouette of a bird. You didn't do anything. Uh, what else we got? Uh, oh. Where is my fox bowl? The one that was fully masked. So now on this bowl, I burned right up to the edge. And it's difficult and tricky. And if you make a little mistake, then it burns down the edge and it loses that perfect edge. But because it was so thin, I, in a work area, I couldn't do anything about that. When possible, I use automotive detailing tape. You can pass that around if you want. It's like $12 a roll, but paint does not go underneath it. So unless your wood is really porous, you're not going to have any bleed underneath. And what I'll do is when the wood is on the lathe, I will put the tape onto the rim around the outside edge and around the inside edge. <clears throat> At which point in time you can imagine, if you think about it, that it will not be perfectly lined up. It'll just look pretty perfect. And then you take some kind of a sharp point of anything that you have that's handy that comes to a sharp point and turn your lathe on at a medium low speed and gently go in and cut off a little bit of that edge on the tape. And I'll cut in a little groove on both sides, peel off the little threads of scrap on the inside, and now I have an absolutely perfect circle masked off. And this is all done. 
So then all you have to do is get to the tape. And they make that automotive detail tape in eighth inch, three sixteenths, quarter inches, all kinds of different sizes. Now you see I have a perfect line, so I don't have to worry about trying to be careful to the outside edge. This has a small trough in there from where I cut the, the tape, and my paint goes right into the trough, right up to the tape, so you don't even see the trough unless you're really looking for it, and I have a perfect fit. So I'm just kind of cheating to make my stencil a perfect fit and making the inside line a perfect fit because all I'm doing is sloppy painting after everything's covered. Yeah. 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 All right. So one of the things to consider now, uh, we talked uh, briefly and it was brought up over here talking about the bowls about form. So now you might have a really nice form, but a very, very shallow space here. This isn't necessarily adaptable for putting stencils because you're not going to see it because it's going to be down. So if I was going to put it on the outside, I would want a tall sided vessel. And then I could wrap it around the outside. Or you can make what we call the Saturn bowl. And with the Saturn bowl, I have lots of room to work and I can put any number of things in here. And then it's just up to your imagination what you want to put on there. Okay, and uh, you can, another thing you can do with the painter's tape, uh, and this I learned from Graham Priddle before I learned any of this stuff, is he would take the tape and he would just make an arc, and then he would make another arc, and then you fill in the middle and use a razor blade to cut off the points, and he ended up with these like canoe-shaped ovals that were now taped and masked off. And he would do that in three or four different places, and you can make an outline around that and leave an empty space and then you do all your painting or your texturing and you've created your art just using a piece of tape. In fact, you could use painter's tape and stick it on the wood and use a razor blade after it's on the wood and cut it out if you're really talented and get good straight lines and you'd still be masked. Um, oh, here's one. So, I had another one here. I have the, the, the fish. Send that back up here. See, here was a stencil. <clears throat> I showed it partly peeled. And I don't want to mess this thing up. Sometimes you peel too fast, you oh, there goes a foot, you know. <laughs> yeah, you lost half a foot. So I'm fighting with it, you know, when I'm on my table. So now I want to stabilize it. So I brought another vase, another hollow form. Do I have one, a hollow form here that has nothing on it? No. I haven't seen it. It's funny. It's on my workshop table. <laughs> or it's on someone else's workshop table tomorrow. <laughs> so now I have my tape. I didn't quite get all my image. So I just overlap my tape to make sure I get all of it. And we'll see if it'll peel off of here conveniently. There we go. My favorite aunt was a uh, professional artist, and this is one of her original designs. All right, so now I have this guy, and I want to stick him on something round. I'm going to have a problem, because as I wrap it around, this is not flat. So you have less trouble with smaller images 
or flatter bolt. So if it was a really big diameter, it'd be flatter. So what I'll have to do when I put it around, I'm gonna have wrinkles. So I just take a scissors or a razor blade and I'm gonna cut darts. And I don't wanna cut into this wood, so I'm try to be careful. But the idea is you're gonna cut a dart and then you can tape it down. And then you just take more masking tape and you just cover up your dart as long as you're masked. So if you keep on doing all these darts, then when you peel it apart, things won't be overlapping. And this is because I had another one that was blank. It was easier to see. Just making a mess. It won't even let go. So what I might do is cut it entirely, take it off, overlap it, and then lay it down again, and then cut it, and then move another piece until I can get it to lay flat. Here you can see there's a bubble. Can you see that? So I just cut out that raised area and let it overlap and stick it back <coughs> down again. So you can work around all these curved shapes. It just takes a little bit more patience and a little bit more time. And this tape you're using here, is this masking tape? It's basically masking tape, okay. yeah. <laughs> all right, what else is there? Okay. Um, see, we talked about the curve. Oh, internet art. So I think I mentioned that you can go on the internet and you can type in any animal. Uh, one of the internet sites I use is called vectorcourthole.com and it's a pay service. Uh, but you can go in there and you can put in ferrets, mink, squirrels, uh, orangutans. Then they will find you clip arts of those animals and some of them will be drawings and some of them will be overly modernistic interpretations, and some of them will be silhouettes. And then I just slide that icon onto my desktop and I open it in my computer program and I trace it. Or you can enlarge it on a piece of paper and print it out, and then you can take another tracing paper and retrace those images. So any image that you have on a piece of paper, you can scan it, and then you can just paste them all up onto your piece of paper, print them out on the Avery labels, and you've got stencils and you're ready to go. All right, I think I've gone through everything. Any questions? That's awesome. All right, well, thank you very much. All of my jokes. Yeah, can I tell you that I met this guy who was a, a, a songwriter. And you know how our niche is lathe turning, obviously. And, and his niche, uh, you know, you have folk music and then you have uh, uh, rock and roll and rap. And, and his niche was songs about machinery, especially sewing machines. He was a singer songwriter. Uh, uh, handle that. Yeah, it's too late for that. It's too late for that. Don't yeah, give up your day job. Yeah, and then, then I had a Snapple cap. And you know about Snapple facts. And a Snapple fact is an unsupported fact. It's a fact. You know, bees have. 40 lenses in their eyes. Well, how do you know that? This one says that pirates wear gold earrings for good luck. How do you know that? I mean, and, and, and also it doesn't answer the question that everybody wants to know is how much does a, a, a pirate's gold earring cost? A buck an ear. <laughs> well, it's supposed to fit those in as we're working. All right. And then one, as long as I got the podium here, one really short last thing. Um, I found these screws for putting on faceplates. They're coarse thread. I can use them over and over again, like 20, 30, 40 times before they wear out the heads and I throw them away. And it, they're great. I bought a box of 100 of them. If anybody wants any of these, they're 25 cents each. And I'm willing to share them. And that's it. And if you want to come up here and look at anything, feel free.
All right.